We've got some key men's basketball recruiting news to talk about on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Let's get right on into it. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On, the Louisville podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. I want to take this time to thank you, as I always do, for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On, the Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. As I mentioned in the cold open that... We'll be talking a lot about basketball recruiting today. Uh, 2023 four-star forward Curtis Williams Jr. has um, cut his list to four with a possible decision date coming up very soon. Could he be the next Cardinals commitment for Kenny Payne? We will discuss that. Uh, We will then transition over into the 2024 class where the Cardinals have landed inside of the final six for Highly ranked five-star prospect Jamari Phillips. Uh, We'll talk about the Cardinals' chances there. And then in the final segment, we'll go into uh, NBA talk, where former Louisville Cardinals star Gorgie Zhang has agreed to a deal with the San Antonio Spurs. I love the fit here for both parties. I will explain to you why at the conclusion of the show. Uh, But first, we'll talk about the basketball recruiting uh, realm beginning with the 2023 cycle four star uh, combo guard slash forward Curtis Williams Jr. has cut his list to four. Now, if you remember uh, the past um, a couple weeks of episodes, there was a segment that I did on um, the recruitment where I thought that Louisville was in pretty solidly. Uh, Curtis Williams mentioned. Uh, to 24-7 Sports in an article that they wrote at the end of July, I believe, that Williams had been hearing from Kenny Payne and the coaching staff at Louisville more so than a lot of other programs. It seemed like they were recruiting him the hardest. Um, It seems like moving forward, um, uh, Alabama and I think it's – Alabama and – Notre Dame have been taken off the list, but the top four now, Seton Hall, Louisville, Florida State, and Providence. The Friars were not included in the top six when when he released that uh, a couple weeks ago, but are in the top four now. The Cardinals made the list. This is what Curtis Williams said about the Cardinals program when asked by Travis Branham of 24-7 Sports. He said, and I quote, What stands out to me about them is the coaching staff. The coaching staff over there is great, and they just love uh, the players. Just seeing that and the coaching staff they've built, it would be good to be a part of that. Um, uh, He goes on to say, I have an official visit to Providence from September 9th to September 11th. I will either be going to Louisville on Labor Day weekend or September 15th through the 18th. Um, Brandon goes on to say, as he looks to take those two visits, he knows what he is looking to get out of his trips before making his decision. Excuse me. Brandon goes on to list a very important nugget of information. Uh, Curtis Williams' mother's birthday is September 19th, and that is the day that he hopes to make the decision. So uh, the decision coming seemingly here in the next, uh, well, let's put it less than a month. Um, So the question is now, could he be the next Cardinal commitment? Well, um, I think that Louisville is in a good of a spot as they could hope to be in this recruitment. Um, Williams, who is currently ranked as the 52nd best prospect, according to 24-7 Sports, the six foot six small forward out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, um, has been offered by the Cardinals uh, sort of throughout the AAU process, um, toward the end of the AAU process, I should say, was offered back on July 11th. Uh, by the Cardinals uh, and coach Kenny Payne and staff have been very adamant on recruiting him very hard. Um, They have been persistent in their approach. They have been 
um, is seemingly making up a ton of ground in this recruitment and is not gone unnoticed, as I mentioned in that late July episode that, hey, look, Curtis Williams has noticed, you know, the effort that Louisville is putting in on the recruiting trail and has essentially said that the Cardinals in Providence have, um, you know, made the most – uh, have made him feel like a priority, maybe even more so than the other programs, or at least recruiting him harder than the other programs. But um, Louisville, Florida State, Xavier, and uh, Providence, this seems like you know it could be a tough recruitment to win, but you have to feel good about the Cardinals' chances, especially about the time frame of a commitment. Um, if he's looking to make the commitment at the end of September, or the middle of September, September 19th, um, and it's it's been known that he's going to make a visit to Louisville. He made none official to Florida State in the past. Um, I'm not sure when he's visited Xavier. Um, I know that they've both Florida State and Xavier offered back on uh, April 14th, as it's listed on the 24/7 Sports site. Um, but also, I really really think that this time frame benefits the Louisville Cardinals for a couple reasons. Number one. You know, anytime in recruiting, it's always nice to get the last opportunity uh, of a certain set of schools to be able to sway his opinion, sway his mind, try to persuade him. Uh, you kind of get the 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 lasting impression, so to speak, regardless if it's Labor Day weekend or if it's, um, you know, September 15th or the 18th. I think it's beneficial. I think if you're the Cardinals, um it seems like, yeah, it wouldn't matter as long as you get a visit. But, man, it seems like if you were able to get that visit from the 15th to the 18th and then he's looking to possibly make a decision on the 19th, if the visit goes well and everything, well, it's – I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better setup here for Kenny Payne and company to get another prospect in the 2023 cycle. Uh, and this is a very important recruitment because, you know, there have been people that, you know, have asked me – well, with Caleb Glenn being listed as a small forward, Curtis Williams as a small forward, uh, it seems like there are bigger needs in the class. Where do you kind of sit um, in that respect of um, you know discussion? And I think my my answer has been pretty um, universal, regardless of how the question is phrased, because I think that Curtis Williams is a player that fits what uh, Kenny Payne is looking for in a recruit um, when. Kenny Payne took the stage for his introductory press conference uh, back in March, and seemingly throughout, when he talks about recruiting players, he recruit, you know he talks about wanting to recruit players that um, are very unselfish on offense. They hustle on both ends of the court. They focus on defense, and they're high character players. Curtis Williams checks off all of those boxes, and not to mention, not to mention, Williams is one of. Uh, the the quality shooters in the 2023 class uh, shot, I think, around 40% in, in a couple of the EYBL circuits. Um, a 6'6 forward that seemingly, you know, can do it all. Uh, I like his scoring repertoire. I think that, you know, it's predicated a lot off his ability to create his own shot, and, and that really helps him um, in the perimeter shooting category because he's solid in catch-and-shoot situations, but also in terms of being able to shoot off the dribble and uh, be able to create for himself and for his teammates for his size. Um, I don't, I mean, I get it. I understand the hesitancy when, you know, you talk about, okay, you're recruiting two players that, you know, one six six. Caleb Glenn, I think, is 6'7". They're both listed as small forwards. But I think their playing styles are what um, are so different to me that um, I'm not necessarily concerned about adding Curtis Williams to the mix for two reasons. Number one, like I mentioned, the playing style is completely different than Caleb Glenn. Yes, Glenn is increasingly becoming better as a ball handler. The perimeter shooting is coming around, but he plays more as an interior threat. I think that um, you could see him playing, you know, positionless basketball, maybe as a small ball four, or you know, assuming that the the uh, ball handling comes around proficiently by uh, next fall, you could see him. Um, 
you know, a guy that plays more of a traditional three. But in positionless basketball, you know, Curtis Williams plays more like a two than he does a three. I think you know the the position crunch, so to speak. I think it gets a little bit overblown. Um, yeah, you have guys like Devin Reed, Kamari Lance, Mike James, all in in the same boat. Uh, you know, two three hybrids. But Caleb Glenn is more of a three four rather than a two three. So I don't necessarily see the issue uh, there. Um, in terms of the other. Um, the other reason as to why I'm not necessarily concerned is, is because, you know, you're looking to continue to add top talent. Um, you, you never know in terms of players that could be leaving any given season. You have, I think it's like, you have a couple open scholarships still left from this year's team that are going to carry over. Um, and you're just looking to continue to, you know, rebuild your program. And I think that uh, you aren't in a position to turn away talent like Curtis Williams Jr. I think that um, he's going to be a very, very big asset to whatever uh, college program that he decides to go to. But in terms of that recruitment in itself, I think that Louisville is sitting in a very, very good position. You're as good of a position as you could have asked for if you were a Cardinal fan. Um, the coaching staff is is reaping the benefits of months of recruiting him very, very uh, persistently and, and putting the full court press on him, so to speak. Um, and then, obviously, from a visit standpoint, you're getting one of the two official visits um, in the month of September, right before he's looking to make that college decision. So um, Cardinals are sitting in a very good position. I, I wouldn't necessarily go as far as saying that they are in the driver's seat in this one, but regardless um, – in a very good spot. So who knows by this time next month, we may be analyzing a commitment from a highly ranked four star prospect. So, um, Let's take a minute now to transition over into the 2024 class where five star, uh, guard Jamari Phillips has cut his list to six. The Cardinals have made that list cut. We will discuss the significance of that, what he could bring to the program in terms of skill set, and where Phillips' recruitment is currently uh, standing here in just a second until we talk about our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, golf, esports, and combat sports. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On the Louisville your first listen every day. The Ultimate College Football Preview is here, a seven-episode preview with college experts, local team experts, and Odyssey College Football Insiders. It's everything you need to be ready for the college football season here in one spot coming up less than two weeks away. Search for Ultimate College Football Preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. Transitioning into discussing the recruitment of five-star prospect Jamari Phillips, who is rated as the 21st best prospect in the 24-7 sports composite in the 2024 class. The Modesto California combo guard is the sixth best uh, shooting guard in the country, according to the composite, and the second best in the state of California. Recently cut his list to six. Uh, the Cardinals made that list alongside Gonzaga, Kansas, Oregon, Texas Tech and UCLA. A key note here that uh, Deshaun London of 24-7 Sports made uh, just a couple days ago uh, was that he is still open in his recruitment. So although he's got that top six, it might not necessarily be the final six in his recruitment and um, other schools still can get it into the mix. Um Phillips told Deshaun London, my recruitment is pretty much still open, but these are the rock solid six that I'm pretty much leaning on. If no other school comes in as much as these six have been have been by building a relationship, showing how much they care about getting me to the school and meeting me all the coaches, then I will uh, stick to these six. Uh, so far, I've taken unofficials to UCLA and Kansas. I'm looking to take more in a month or two, but haven't set up any dates yet. The Cardinals are in the mix here. Um he does look to take a visit to the Cardinals program here uh, sometime in the near future. He says this, and I quote, Coach Kenny Payne is a friend of a friend. 
but has been recruiting me hard. He's come to a couple of my games and has been looking at me ever since he got his coaching job at Louisville. He's a great guy with a big background behind him. Him, him coaching at Louisville is a big thing, and the fact that he's been on me the way he's been and wants me to come to his school means a lot. We've built a relationship over time. Um, so I think the writing is on the wall here that the work is cut out for the Cardinals. They're going up against five really, really solid programs that have been recruiting well over the past five to ten seasons, um, some that have won national titles. Uh, you also have the possibility of a possible blue blood school hopping into the mix. You know, Phillips basically went on record and said, look, these are my top six, but they are not the only six that I would focus on if a school comes in and, and you know prioritizes me. Um, but it, the good news is, is that Kenny Payne identified Jamari Phillips early on in you know the process once he got the Louisville job to start building that, that relationship, which is key. And he mentioned that he wants to uh, make – a visit to Louisville. Um, the key thing here, uh, if you're a Cardinal fan, is that I, I wouldn't be looking for a decision coming up soon. Um, this is an opportunity that uh, Louisville needs to get him on an unofficial visit to uh, a big-time game or a big-time weekend to where they're uh, playing uh, a solid opponent um, because you know you're going to continue to – try to lay the groundwork in this recruitment. Uh, Phillips said this in that same uh, article. It's looking like probably June for a decision. So a couple months after we win states, um, I'll see what's going on, talk to coaches for one final time, and I'll probably be done with all my visits by then. For now, I want to hear more from the schools recruiting me on their pitch of why they want or need me at their school and how I fit at the school. I want to know how they would utilize me in their system how we would win a national championship and get me in and out. I also want to be able to build all types of connections through the school outside of the court that can help me in the long run. So Jamari Phillips, um, you know, like, like every other top highly rated prospect, it has his you know, sights set on the NBA as he, as he should. He's a very highly rated prospect, but he also wants to uh, go to a program where he fits in from a skill perspective, from a personal aspect. Um, there's So there's a lot of different things that go into this uh, decision. When you watch him on film, Phillips is a very, very solid scorer, um, a microwave scorer, so to speak. Uh, sitting at six foot three, 190 pounds listed on his 24-7 sports profile, he can create for his teammates. That's one thing that, yes, he's listed as a shooting guard. I would probably venture out and say that he's more so a combo guard because of his ability to handle the ball. He's an underrated facilitator and an underrated lead guard. I do think that he projects as more of an undersized two guard at the next level. Um, you know, six foot three. I wonder if Kenny Payne and company envision him in more of a ball handling role to prepare him for the league. You know, the NBA is a is a league that you know utilizes taller guards. Um, you know, at, especially at the shooting guard position. So six foot three seems to be a little short, not impossible, not unheard of, but still it seems like that's kind of the trend right now in the National Basketball Association. Um, very, very solid scorer, can create his own shot extremely well, good shooter. Uh, perhaps the most impressive aspect to me about his scoring repertoire is his ability to get into the lane and finish around the rim. Uh, does a good job of redirecting his body in the air and absorbing contact. Does a good job of just being able to keep the ball on a string, so to speak, and create uh, his own shot, create separation, and just get to the hole. He's very crafty, um, you know, very... Uh, shifty, so to speak. Um, it's hard for opposing ball handlers to or opposing defenders to stay in front of him. Has very, very good footwork as well. If you go back and watch his film, he has solid footwork in terms of getting his own shot in the paint, um, creating his own shot, fading away. Um, you know, can make some tough, you know, off balance shots. So as a scorer, he's probably going to be one of the best scorers in the 2024 class. Five star prospect. Um, very, very solid that the Cardinals are getting in on this recruitment as soon as they can, trying to lay the foundation and create those relationships that Kenny Payne and company have been uh, rumored to be very, very good at. And, and one of the big um, you know, focal points as to why you know, Kenny Payne deserved the Louisville job. And this, is, and this definitely could be a recruitment you know, in which he has the time and the resources to be able to um, you know, maximize the persuasion and um, you know, do his best to um, you know, create that um, you know, relationship and um, essentially persuade him 
to to come to Louisville due to the fit, the uh, you know, with the program, with the city, with the university, and the um, you know, the the look toward a professional career. So, um, going to be a long road here for Louisville in this recruitment. Uh, it doesn't seem like anything is um, you know. Uh, on the horizon in terms of a decision, Phillips said so himself, but it, now it's just a matter of getting him on campus and um, having a good visit. So um, for the final segment of the show, we're going to take a little bit of a step back, talk about the NBA aspect of things where former Louisville Cardinal national champion Gorgie Zhang has agreed to a one-year deal with the San Antonio Spurs. I love the fit for both parties. We're going to discuss why here in just a second. Excuse me. Obviously, if you are watching this on YouTube or listening to this on certain um, um, audio streaming services, you're not going to hear the audio implemented advertisements. Uh, so if you do, stay tuned. If you do not, obviously stay tuned as well. But let's talk a little bit about Gorgie Zhang. Gorgie Zhang has had a very, very successful NBA career where he has um, accumulated over 70, I think it's close to $75 million in professional contracts uh, since he came into the league in the 2013-14 season. Um, a very, very successful career, one that if you were to tell me back when he got drafted in the first round that this is how his career would go, and I would say that that's a, that's a big success. You know, playing um, nearly 10 years in the NBA is absolutely huge. Uh, made an all-rookie team, has has gotten some big-time contracts, uh, spent the first handful of seasons with Minnesota. Um, I believe he got traded to Memphis um, in 2020-21 season. He played 16 games with the San Antonio Spurs, and then this past year, uh, played 44 games, started three of them for the Atlanta Hawks. Now 32 years old, turning 33 in January, signed a one-year minimum contract with the San Antonio Spurs. I like this for both parties. Let's start with um, why I like this for Gorgie. Um, Gorgie is in a position now to where um, you know there's two schools of thought. You can either be chasing rings, which I, I still think he has some solid years of basketball left in him. So maybe you know after this season, with a solid year of production in a in a system that he's played in before on a roster that he's probably going to get some some um, you know significant playing time. That hey, look, you have a year that you can prove yourself and maybe go get a, a multi year, um, maybe team friendly contract with a possible. Um, you know, contributor, really depending on how he plays this year. But from a personal standpoint, look, he's going back to a place that obviously he's comfortable with, uh, playing a couple games in Sacramento back uh, a couple years ago. Um, you also have the, you know, you have a, a roster now to where you can be that veteran-led presence. And I think that that's why I like this from a San Antonio aspect as well, is the fact that um, outside of, um, you know, Gorgie, you know, you have Jakob Pertle, who's their starting center, uh, Zach Collins, who has kind of bounced around the league a little bit. Uh, but outside of that, um, I, those are the only two guys above six foot ten. Uh, you have Dominic Barlow, who's six foot ten, but he's a 19 year old rookie. Um, you know, Jeremy Soshan, more of a, um, a power forward, uh, Isaiah Roby as well. Uh, but there's a lot of young talent on this team. And they need that veteran-led leadership, um, that veteran presence in the locker room. Gorgie's always been known as a very solid veteran in the locker room, a great teammate. Um, you know, this this move makes sense for both parties. It's a low-risk reward, or low-risk, probably medium reward for the San Antonio Spurs because you have a second uh, unit center that can, you know, it, that obviously is still serviceable. Um, although last year he only averaged about four and three per game, respectively. Um, he is a guy that can give you solid minutes off the bench, um, a solid rebounder. Um, obviously the opportunity has to be there, but um, knows Greg Popovich's system. You know, obviously the comfort and the familiarity is is there from the organizational standpoint as well because of the um 
you know, the decision to bring him back uh, to the team. So for Gorgie, I like this because, hey, look, it's another year in the NBA. You're playing for a team where you're probably going to get some solid playing time, maybe more so than you would at other places. You have uh, a role here at 32 years old to where, you know, we, you know you're not an all-star caliber player. Uh, you're a role player that has filled a very, very solid role since you came into the league. So um, there's no shame in that. You know, he's in the National Basketball Association. He's making, uh, you know, very, very solid money, and he's playing for a organization that obviously utilizes what he brings to the table. Um, and then from San Antonio's perspective, I love this move. It's a low-risk move. Uh, they're paying him a minimum contract, so there's not a lot of risk there. Um, and then you have a veteran – presence that you know whatever he gives you on the court that's great but you also bring him in to be a very very you know solid leader a veteran leader for some of these younger guys like Josh Primo uh Keldon Johnson uh Malachi Branham uh Kieda Bates Diop Romeo Langford um even Yaka Pertle who's 26 years old you know so on and so forth Jeremy Soshan the uh, rookie, uh, DJ Stewart, Devin Vassell, there's a Blake Wesley, the list goes on. There's a lot of young players on this team that's looking to try to find their identity and to be able to develop. This is a great opportunity for both parties. So we discussed um, the recruitments of Curtis Williams Jr., uh, Jamari Phillips, also talked why I love Gorgie Zhang signing with the San Antonio Spurs. Um, before we get out of here, I uh, want to give a quick shout-out to the Locked On ACC podcast hosted by Candace Cooper. The college football season is less than two weeks away. No better way to get caught up to speed on how the uh, national media feels about the Louisville Cardinals and how you you can learn more about their opponents, which is probably even um, you know just as important. So uh, be sure to check that out on all streaming services. Hey, but that's going to wrap up this Monday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We will see you right back here tomorrow.